ladies and gentlemen, rock fans from all around the world. Oh, it's that wonderful time. It's my favourite time. Me and Trish's favourite time. It's MPJ special where we get to talk to one of the bands that we recently re reviewed. And tonight's special guest is Jens from Legion of the Night. Dun, dun, dun. Hello, Good Jens. Good evening, everyone. Good Hi, evening. everyone. Hi, I'm Nigel. Hi, Trish. Good evening. Good I'm evening. glad to be here. So, Thank you for joining us. Indeed. So uh, we recently reviewed your album, uh, Darkness, which kind of, um, and for people who don't know, we rate it out of five in terms of how we enjoyed the album. And it, it's fair to say it had a bit of a split personality from me, who absolutely goddamn adored the album. Probably, in my opinion, it hits my sweet spot. Simon, who loved it. And uh, a couple of other people who have subsequently, hopefully, and will, as ever, eat humble pie. Um, Trish I don't know being... what you're talking about. Uh, neither do I. Neither do I. Um, I do have to eat humble pie, correct, yes. I think I was probably not in the right headspace, or... I don't know. At the time I listened to it, it felt a lot heavier than what I would normally listen to, and so, yes, I my... My opinion of it should not have been my opinion of it because then I listened to it today a couple of times and yeah, I've had to. It's it's got a completely different perspective to me now and there are three tracks on there that I absolutely love. So yeah, again, I think with music it's subjective, it's personal, and every time and place where you listen to something, it's going to have a different view. No, I, and I, I apologise for my previous convictions it's actually very interesting trish because i listened to the album again today i thought because i give it a five and um and i can understand uh, from my personal perspective and maybe we're going to that is uh, maybe why that was jens how would you so the album is darkness okay which is released this year how would you describe your music how would you describe the the album uh, as a whole then um, describe to Trish or someone uh, anybody, <laughs> who has uh, never heard it before. Well, we forget Trish. Don't worry about Trish. Fine, anybody, <laughs> anybody who's listening. So. No, she she's right. It's it's it's. Uh, um, everybody has has its own opinion, and maybe she was in the mood to to uh, listen to it again, and I'm glad she did. And uh, but it has been it would have been fine if if she does not like it as well. Um, how to explain or to describe it? I think the the title "Darkness" is, is quite um, it's quite fitting, because um, the lyrics are dark and uh, no 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 cliche lyrics, no fantasy stuff, no beer or, or metal stuff at all. Uh, just um, let's say real stories or, or based upon real stories or something you you watch in the news, and um, I think. Um, Considering those kind of lyrics, the the music has to be um, has to suit or has to fit to, to this this topic. So, and I think um, it might be quite heavy. Yes, it it's, it should be quite heavy. Um, but it's in my opinion the, the the most important thing. It's it's emotional. It has different kind of emotions. It has fury. It has um, sadness. Maybe not so much happiness, but <laughs> um, I think it, it has a lot of um, various emotions and the diversity in it, and that's my approach of writing songs. It, it, it is interesting because <clears throat> I say to people that I love diversity in an album, and I don't mean diversity in, like, if you, if you listen to the Raiders Fall in Reverse album, he, he goes hard on metalcore for a couple of songs and then he literally has a country and western song in there and then back to it and, and, and it, it's diversity but in different styles what I like is diversity in the ebb and the flow of the album and what what I, I, I and, and I can understand something like Trish maybe on first listen or second listen not really getting it because you open up with no control which smashes you in the face 
and the singing is almost guttural, right? Okay, in terms of it's it's more like it's a bit harsh vocals. It's not bad, but it's a bit oh. And then you kick in with Rebirth and Darkness, which uh, reminds me of something like something like similar to what Ghost would be, but a lot harder. And it's a lot mm-hmm. and it's a lot more melodic and symphonic, right down to to Darkness, which is a bit more melodic. And then bang in your face, you come in with hate, and you've got that guttural kind of singing again. So it, it seems to, and, and it's really fascinating because I, I, I was driving to pick up my daughter, and I thought, I know, I'm just going to flip through the album and just go, yeah, just flick through the songs just to give myself a reminder. And then I discovered why I give it a five because I couldn't do that. <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't skip, particularly from Rebirth and and Darkness and Hate. And then from what those three songs, No Control doesn't. It sets the tone a little bit, but it's those next three songs I think that personally grip me and and hook me into that album. And then it ebbs and it it literally goes. I'm going to come and smash you in the face now, and I'm going to make you feel a different emotion. And then it slows it down to melodic and and. And then some were kind of in between, and it, and it, it's just a brilliant album. It's it's diverse in its true sense of the words. So I'm really glad you kind of you kind of said that. Um, so you you're the main composer. What where do you get your inspiration from then, Jens? In terms of like because that is a it's a, that's a bit of a roller coaster. Do you go through a roller coaster sort of writing it? Um, I think. When we started this band, it was about it's about four years ago uh, during the pandemic. Um, I had not so much else to do, so um, <laughs> I had some, let's say, some uh, some personal experience who uh, inspired me writing some songs, and um, I I got to know Henning, and uh, we had the same passion for one special band, Sabotage. And um, our music is, is mainly inspired by Sabotage, especially on the first album. And um, this is some, some, some source of inspiration for me. But um, I think I, um, I'm a bit now finding my own style in this, in this band. And um, co- comparing uh, this with my main band, Dawn of Destiny, I write about 20 songs. And then I, I delete this one and this one, and then we, we choose about 13. When I write songs for Legion of the Night, I just write, let's say, 13 songs, and there's no there's there's nothing in the, in the trash box. I use all those songs. I, I take time, write, write uh, sit down, and write all the songs within, let's say, four or five weeks. And um, I just focus on this this process of songwriting and um, uh, that's that's my my main passion and I I, I take you know, it, it takes some time but not as much as it could so I'm I'm really satisfied with with my own work and um, uh, I'm I'm very glad that you like it and some other people do as well. <laughs> no 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 Jens Jens I didn't like it I fucking loved it okay let's get this right <laughs> okay. okay I loved it and I was scratching my head. <laughs> When I'm on my own. Um, listen, um, you, what, what was the name of your other band, did you say? Honours of Destiny, did you say? Dawn, Dawn of Destiny, yeah. Dawn of Destiny. I think I might have heard of that band as well. Yeah, it's quite amazing, isn't like it? So. And uh, um, and how does the music from Dawn of Destiny, is Dawn of Destiny like a power metal band? How does it... Uh, I think I might have listened to one of your albums, Dawn of Destiny. I think you are... Pa- it's, that's a power metal. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's it's more it's more uh, it sounds more European and um, let's say it's more inspired inspired by bands like let's say Halloween or so. It is it's female fronted. Um, oh, okay. Hmm. Yeah, it, it it sounds different. So I, in my opinion, it sounds different, but um, it has it is I think it's even more it has more diversity than Legion of the Night because there are some uh, there is some happy, happiness in this as well <laughs> uh, that's not in Legion of the Night um, it, it, it's quite interesting because um, in Rebirth um, there are there are guitar there are riffs in there that remind me of something from the, the early 80s late 70s that, that goes through those guitar riffs but it's okay. it, it sounds kind of fresh. It's uh, it's almost like 
it's almost like I've heard it a thousand times, but I can't help myself being addicted to it. <laughs> I can't help myself, right? Um, and and so and that's also what I like. I feel like those that there's and I say to people who are trying to keep the new wave of age of classic rock going, you've really got to mix it up with modern kind of music. I'm like, did you consciously do that? Were you inspired by some of the guitarists from that era and 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 mix them in and and try to maybe bring them into it or mix them into a more modern kind of sound, which I think you've done. But um, I don't think I'm really inspired by this. Um, let's say classic rock. I, I like it, but this does not come to my mind when when I write some riffs. Um, it's just playing on the guitar. Have ideas in my mind and uh, let's put things together there are there are several ideas in my mind and I try to put it together to one one piece um, first there's a kind of imagination in my head um, what kind of music I'd like to do what kind of riffs would would, would be good and um, then I sit down and just record and um, I always always uh, um, delete some parts and then then there's something else come to my mind but the funny thing is there's another song on the album called Leave Me. And after writing this song, I think this song has for me a, a kind of, let's say, late 70s approach. I'm not quite sure why, but it, it somehow reminded me on some, yeah, some songs. On I've the, listed on the... that as one of my favorite of the album. Okay. Leave Me. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. I'm, I'm not quite sure why. Maybe because uh, the, um, the, the the vocal melodies and... Um, how the, the the guitars are not are, are more in the background and um, but the, the the mood of the song the whole atmosphere makes me uh, reminds me of something that I would connect to the to the seventies. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I agree there. So do you do you write the lyrics first or the music first? Um, sometimes music, sometimes lyrics. Because um, sometimes it's quite specific how they do it. Yeah. Um, when I started writing music, I always started with um, the lyrics, and um, w while I'm writing lyrics, I always um, get some ideas for the melodies. But um, I think in the last years, I I switched it, and um, I just try playing music, and then look what kind of lyric fit to the, to to the music. But sometimes it's the other way around, so. So how long has how long have you been with Dawn of Destiny then? How many years of has that project been going? Uh, we started in two thousand five already. Yeah. And, uh, we recorded our first album two thousand seven, and now it's our ninth album coming out in November. November. Well, we've got to put that on our review. Uh, it'll probably be for yeah. Okay, that'll be for the new year then. So. Cool. So. Um, what made you? Was there something burning inside you? You think I, I I love doing this, but I need I need to do something else. Is that what made you doing COVID? You went I need to explore. Well, I think I'm I'm an average bass player, keyboard player, guitar player, but I think I'm quite a good songwriter, and I have about five or six hundred songs already, and. Um, I'm quite fast in writing songs, so I think I have some skills in that, and um, I have much creativity that I want to to show to to let out. And I know I, I never played in successful bands, but I, I don't I don't mind. It's it's just um, it's just something that I, that I feel, and um, I want to show my my emotions and. Um, this is this is the way expressing my emotions, and um, I think I will go on with this <laughs> for for many years. Yeah, no, don't stop. No. God, <laughs> no, I won't. <laughs> Trish, before you start texting me, um, I go my turn, my I'm turn. I've not texted you at all. You, but you will do if I don't give you a turn. Um, <laughs> go ask a question or two. Okay, so my first question. It's probably going to sound really cheesy. How did you choose the name of the band? Pardon? How do I choose? The name of the band, Legions oh, of the okay. Night. What? Ah, uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> that's that's quite easy because um, as many bands before, I just um, 
looked for something within a sabotage song and um, they recorded a song called legions and uh, the, the uh -huh. lyrics go legions of the night and um, uh -huh. that was something striking me and i thought that would be really cool for a for a band name like it okay. and what bands are some of your musical influences um, concerning Legions of the Night, of course, the main influence is Sabotage, but um, I try not so much to include some of my idols. Um, I would say, in, in general, my idols are Dream Theater, Opeth, Halloween, um, maybe maybe even Nile, a death metal band, and... Um, but it's not so much influencing my my songwriting when i started uh, making music i was mainly inspired by halloween and uh, blind guardian and that that kind of stuff uh but that's that's not 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 uh not more in the in the present mm -hmm. and if you had to pick a favorite song of the latest album darkness what would it be from my own album from darkness, yeah. Um, I would choose one moment. I think that's my favorite one. Nige, do you have one? Uh, oh, rebirth. <coughs> mm. Rebirth. Okay. Yeah, that, that it's just uh, after the first track, it just it got me into the album, and and I really yeah. the guitar okay, riffs in I... there, the guitar riffs in rebirth are just like I they just harken me to those days. But I don't feel a lot, a lot of classic new wave classic rock. It's it's the same. Uh, repeat, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. Those guitar riffs are in there in the middle and towards the end. Uh, and then there's another little guitar rift in there, which is just so goddamn bloody cool. Um, and and it just like and and I, and I, and I, I like the I like the melodic singing and and stuff in there as well because after that first track, I was going. Yeah, okay, it was okay, and then bang, rebirth kicks in, and I thought, my God, and I've got to say now, he can sing. Your lead singer can sing. He has got yes. a great. He's got a very. Um, I get sick and tired of the pedestrian vocals that hit the same notes every single time, and his vocal range is really diverse. Um, from. Yeah. You know, and and I and I love it. Um, absolutely loved it. I thought it was fantastic. So, um, how about yours? Leave me or something? Is it leave me yours? Um. Well, I, I, I first of all I wrote down Rebirth because then that was the one that drew me into the album. But then I have put Leave Me, and then the last song tonight he grins again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What a way to finish the album, actually. Okay, so yeah, this podcast is called musical people a journey so we like to know where that journey started when you were i mean you you mentioned that you are your you you multi-instrumental and a, and a lyric and a songwriter where did it all start because you mentioned growing up that halloween was a real inspiration for you did you when you were kind of growing up and learning multiple instruments how old were you when you started learning your first instrument there were you quite young or did you develop late or how does that work for you I think I seriously started playing keyboard with 18, so wow. I think I was, I was quite old, and um, um, I started, let's say, being 13, I tried to play some chords on the keyboard, but not seriously. I just watched uh, some music videos. I watched um, Bohemian Rhapsody and uh, some other Queen videos, and I just looked what what he pushed on the piano and I just repeated it and um, I just um, tried it again and again and then I thought oh okay uh, I have to I have to push those those ones and the black and the <laughs> the white ones and um, then when I get older when I got about 18 then I try to, to make it more serious but um, I, I had no teacher or so I, I did it by myself and then um, when I was 20, I started playing guitar and I had some, uh, some lessons for about one or two years. And um, then I think it was 2006, I, I thought, okay, guitar is, is okay, but I'm, I'm not the most skilled guitar player. 
so um, I, I try my luck on the bass, and I'm very happy and satisfied with playing bass um, live. I, I think I will never play again live uh, guitar as I did previously, but um, in my main band, on of Dusty, I'm the bass player, and that's that's fine with me. And and when did you then start to write songs? It was about yeah. It was the same time when I um, learned guitar, and um, I, the the first two songs I wrote on keyboard. It was just keyboard and vocals, and was uh, maybe uh, simple. And all oh, that belongs to the first song. And um, but when I when I started playing guitar, I I improved quite quickly, and um, it took me in, on on another level of writing songs. And um, I would say serious songwriting started about 2004, 2005, and there are some songs uh, I still use, for example, that I that are um, 20 years old. And okay, I'm gonna also, <laughs> I'm gonna ask you a very awkward question now. You have a choice. You have a choice to headline a big rock festival. Which band would you headline with? Dawn of Destiny or Legion of the Night? Ah, oh, that's oh, it's enough, isn't it? You, you, you. Well, uh, that's a fun question, isn't it? Well, I mean, the other one can support, like, by the way. The yeah, other one can support. We do a double headline. Do you want to say Destiny and Legions of the Night? Yeah, that, that would be the right question, uh, the right answer. Um, we we never played live with Legion of the Night, so um, I, I think it's quite obvious for me. Um, I would choose Dawn of Destiny because that's the thing I st it, it all started with, and um, we have some life experience in, uh, in opposite to the night we never played live. So probably I would oh, choose really? Dawn of Destiny. But if it would be Legion of the Nights, it would be fine for me as well, of course. <laughs> well, of course, but you but you probably have a bigger catalogue of songs to choose from to headline with at the minute, isn't it? So, uh, so you say you haven't played with Legion of the Night. Any any plans in that direction to be to be live performing with them? Uh, not yet, because um, it's 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 hard to earn it live or playing live, and we would have to because um, our singer Henning uh, does it. Uh, it's it's, it's Music is his main job, let's say, and um, he needs to get some 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 money with playing live. And um, if we would play some um, some small festivals or so, it, it would not be enough, to be honest. So I, I have to be honest at this point. Uh, we we can't make it for free, and um, we 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 thought about it doing it, but doing a whole tour or or some some small festivals and so what does Hen who knows maybe maybe it will be in the future so what you what else does Henning do in the music industry then is he does he sing for other bands as well um, his let's say first serious band is called Metallium they started in the late 90s it's with Chris Caffery from Sabotage and Mike Anna on drums it was quite successful at least here in Germany and um, then he um, was with Gus G in Firewind. Maybe you know them. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Um, yeah. And um, there are some several several other bands he's saying He has a he has quite a good background, and um, so it was an honor for me to have him on my album. That definitely works, whatever. And. Uh, is there going to be more from Legions of the Night with you and Henning? Is there plans to, to do a follow-up album to this to this one? Or yeah, we have. But um, <laughs> as I said before, even this is a is a matter of um, of budget and money. Yeah, sure. And uh, <laughs> uh, I'm the one who who pays all this, and uh, paying a loan is quite heavy. So it yeah. we are we are both. Um, we both want to continue, and I guess we will continue, but um, we have to wait if it's 2025 or maybe uh, 2026. Um, last week we talked about it and uh, we thought about starting songwriting at the end of this year and maybe recording beginning of the next year, but um, maybe there's some delay, we, we are not sure yet. 
Well, I, I certainly hope so. Um, so what's the plan with uh, Dawn of Destiny then? You've released a new album. What's the new album called? This is due out in, in November. Yeah, it's just called Nine because it is our ninth album. And uh, we just uh, released our first single in September. And uh, the second single is coming, I think, today in one week. It's uh, October the 17th, yeah. And then the album release will be November the 22nd. And uh, um, yeah, really, really satisfied with this album and uh, we have a guest vocal from Swedish went to Dragonland Germany with this album and sorry oh, I, I, I got about uh, my connection went there Jens could you repeat who the guest vocal is again sorry from was it Dragonland did you say Yes, it was Jonas Heidgard from the Swedish band uh, Dragonland. <coughs> Brilliant! Oh, fantastic! They're very good as well. Oh, that's that's really got quite cool. So, and do you plan on touring then with Dawn of Destiny? Uh, not really a tour, but we have some some gigs already um, now. In, in in November, we have two two uh, two gigs here in Germany and um, some some festivals in 2025, and uh, we we watch out for more. Trish was one of the. Um, I'm just researching Dawn's Destiny. Was one of the singles released in September called "A Child's Hand." Yeah. 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 I think you you might like it. I'm off to a power metal festival this weekend, so I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that heavy, so. So, Trish, any more questions from you? No, I, I have said all my piece. I will hand over to you, mister. Right, well, I, I think we've kind of covered everything, Jens. Do you know what? I just, I, I'm just i so delighted. I mean, even though you didn't make it into a Hall of Fame because certain other individuals didn't give you a high enough score, I personally... Oh, love, well, here we I go. rub it in. I rubbed it in. Of course I do, but ultimately... I love talking to bands. I give a five I for. Okay. <laughs> I give him a five. I love the album, and therefore it's an honour for you to come and talk to us. Thank you ever so much, Jens, for your time. Yeah, um, you're no, a real gentleman, so um, and I I hope you continue. Good luck with Dawn of Destiny. We will definitely have that for review. Um, that will yeah. be reviewed now in January, unfortunately. Um, so, um, but uh, yeah, good luck with that, my friend. And have a thank good you. Christmas. And thank you very much for joining us tonight. Thank you, Jens Faber from Legions of the Night. Thank you as well. Thank Goodbye. You. Ciao for now, everybody. Keep on rocking. Goodbye.